Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson today in continuation with your main topic, arithmetic of finance. We are going to continue with our last lesson where we discuss profit and loss. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, we'll be able to solve more problems involving profit and loss. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual in your favorite segment of the lesson that is most is fun. Today I'll give you another group of numbers uh, and this group of numbers are called abundant numbers. I will explain what are abundant numbers and give you examples of those abundant numbers after completing my lesson today. So don't go away. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let us just move ahead and take an example, starting with the very first one. Example one says Aminu sold his bicycle to Musa and made a profit of 25%. Musa then sold it to Olu for 19,000 naira at a loss of 5%. The question asked here, how much did Aminu bought the bicycle? Solution to this very problem, what we do first is to let Y be the cost price as far as Amiri is concerned. That is the original price of the bicycle. Because all these uh, percentages is now percentage of uh, the initial cost price. So if Y is the cost price, so we now have the selling price uh, as far as Amiri is concerned. That is the amount that he sold the bicycle to Musa. So if Y is the cost price, we now have the selling price to be equal to why that is the cost of price plus the profit and that profit is 25 percent of the cost so simply find this uh, to get uh, simplest form you now have 125 y over 100 so this is the selling price we can further reduce this to a much simpler form because uh, 1 to 5 can be divided by 25, 100 can be divided by 25 you now have reduced the form of this as 5y over 4 so this is the selling price as far as Amino is concerned, and it is the same as the cost price as far as Musa is concerned. We continue. So we now move to transaction between Musa and Olu. Olu bought the bicycle from Musa at uh, a rate of 19,000 Naira. But the time Musa sold it to Olu is a loss, which means the amount that he sold it to Olu is below the amount that he purchased the bicycle, that is this 5Y over 4. So let me just move to that transaction. So let's now find the Musa's selling price. How much did Musa sell it to Olu? Of course, it's given in the question 19,000, but let's just attempt to find it. So the selling price, because it is a loss, is now going to be is the cost price, which is 5Y over 4 minus the 5% of 5Y over 4, that is minus 5% loss. This is the 5% loss. This percentage loss is a percentage of his cost price. And his cost price is 5Y over 4, which we have here. That is the selling price as far as a video is concerned. So we now substitute the selling price by 19,000 because we have it. And we now simplify this. So I'm going to have 19,000 equals to 5Y over 4, which I copied. But this, after multiplying 5 over 100 times 5y over 4, you now have y over 16. This is the simplification of this because uh, this 5 times 5 gives you 25, and that 25 in 100 will give you 4. So that 4 times this 4 will now give you this 16. And there in the numerator level, you have y left. So we now simplify this, or we we'll solve this very equation. So if I continue, I will now have. Uh, 3004, that is, I now cross multiply. I multiply each and every term by 16. So 5y five, five, five over 4 times 16 gives you this 20y. And the y over 16 times 16 gives you minus y. So that 20y minus y can give you 19y. And you now divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is 19, to get y as uh, this 3004 divided by 19. So dividing this correctly, you now give answer 16,000 and naira. So originally, Amini bought this very bicycle at the rate of 16,000 naira. This is the value of Y. So let's just move and take another example. Example number two, it says a store paid a wholesale price of 800 naira for a set of spoons and marked on it a selling price of 20% profit. 
but during a special 10 day sales promotion period, the store reduced the price by 10%. And later, after the 10 days expire, they increased the price by 5%. So the question asks what was the final selling price of this box? So, solution to this very problem, let's just take this one. So, this is another really challenging question. The store purchased the set of spoons at this rate. That is the cost price of the spoons. And the right on it, that is the selling price to enable them make a profit of 20%. Let's just uh, find that very first selling price. So the very first selling price, that is the selling price that include this 20% profit. So it's now going to be the 800 naira, that is the cost price, plus uh, the 20% of the cost price. That is the profit that it intended to make. So this gives the very first selling price, which is the marked price. So continue. So I'm going to have 800 plus 160. This 160 is this 20% of 800. And adding 160 to 800 give result to 960 naira. So this is the initial selling price, which is the market price. But during this special sales period, this now price is now reduced by is reduced by 10%. So we now find the second price. So the second selling price is now going to be this amount minus 10% of it. Because the 10% is not the 10% of 800, but the 10% of whatever that is marked on the item. So it's now going to be 960 minus the 10% of 960. The 10% of 960 gives you 96 Naira. When you subtract 96 Naira from 960, it gives you the second selling price. It is now 864. So this set of spoons during that special sales period, this is the price of the spoon. Initially, it was 960, but after reduction of 10%, the new price is now 864. So after this tender sales promotion period, now the price, the store decided to increase price of all items by 5%. So we now have the final, final selling price. So that final selling price is now going to be this price plus the 5% of it. So it's now going to be 864 plus the 5% of it because the store decided to increase all prices by 5%. So 5% of 600, 864 gives you 43 naira 20 kobo. And when you add it to 864, you now have the final selling price as 907 naira 20 kobo. This is the final selling price. This is how we answer this question. It's not hard. Just take it bit by bit. Let's just take one more example. Example number three says a fruit seller bought 50 bunches of banana and 150 pieces of an apples for this the total money that is 23,500 So that fruit seller sold all the banana and make a profit of 30% and they sold all the pineapple and make a profit of 40%. If her total profit was now 8,550 naira, the question asked here is to find the total cost of the banana and the total cost of the pineapple. Solution to this very problem, what we now do, we don't have the cost price of those different items, that is banana and pineapple, so we have to introduce the letters there. So let me let X to be the cost of 50 bunches of banana that that woman bought, and let Y be the cost of 150 pieces of pineapples. There we have the total cost of those items. And we have the total profit realized by selling all the items. So there we can now make two equations that we solve simultaneously for us to get this two unknowns x and y. So let me start with the total cost of those items. That is by add x and y. X is the total cost of all the banana, and y is the total cost of all the pineapples. These two amounts, if you add, it gives this 23,500 because the question says uh, she buy those items at the rate of this 23,500. That is the total cost of the items. So we continue. So we now move ahead also to find the equation in terms of this profit that she realized from selling all the items. So the percentage profit for, for banana is 30%. 
and the percentage profit for an apple is 40 percent so let me use the, this also because the total profit is there let me get the equation for this uh, percentage profit so then i'm going to have 30 percent of x x remember is the cost of a banana it is that banana that she had 30 percent profit so 30 percent of x this gives the profit she realized from banana only plus the 40 percent of y this gives the profit realized from pen apple and these two profits if we add it together will give a thousand five hundred fifty naira the total profit she realized after selling all the fruits so simply find that this will now have uh, we we'll now have 3x plus 4y equals to 85,500. What happened here? This one zero in 30 will cancel one zero, so you have 10. One zero in 40 cancel one zero in 100, so you have 10. So when we multiply each and every term by 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 10, we are going to have uh, we are going to have 3x plus 4y equals to instead 8,500. We now have 85,500. This is what happened here. So this, I now have my second equation. Let me just name that. Let me name the very first one equation one and the second one equation to look at it. So I'm going to have these two equations containing the same variable x and y in which I'll solve them simultaneously. So let me just use substitution method. From equation one, I can make x subject by simply taking y to the right hand side. There gives me x equals to 23,500 minus y. Then I can now substitute x in the second equation. Let me go on and do that. So substituting x with this 23,500 minus y in equation 2. So I'm going to come here, substitute x. Instead of 3x, I now have 3 times this 23,000 minus y. So let me just write it. So I'm going to have 3 times instead x. I now put 23,500 minus y, then plus uh, the 4y, which I copied from the equation, it cost my 85,500 from the equation also. So I now have equations in terms of one and none only, which is y. Let me expand this very bracket. That gives me 70,500 minus 3y, three, 3 times this, 3 times minus y. Copied your plus 4, copied your 85,500. So we collect the like terms. Minus 3y plus 4y gives you y, and this 70,500 shifted to the right hand side it now becomes minus. So when you subtract it, you now have 15,000. So there, my y is now 15,000 naira. This will now be the total cost of the 150 pieces of n apples. So I can substitute this amount in my equation one to get the cost of the 50 bunches of banana. So substituting y by this 15,000 naira in equation one, I can now have my x, that is x, look at equation one, x plus y, instead y, I now have 15,000 equals to 23,500. So taking 15,000 to the right hand side, it gives me x as 8,500 naira, that is Subtracting 15,000 from 23,500 naira gives you this 8,500 naira. So this is the cost of this 50 bunches of banana. And with this, I have answered this question because I have the cost of uh, the cost of 150 pieces of an apples, and I also have the cost of 50 bunches of banana. With this, my dear student, I have come to the end of this very lesson. I hope you enjoy it, and let me just move quickly to the last segment. Mars is fun. And I explain what are abundant numbers. A number is abundant if the sum of the proper factors of that very number. The sum is now greater than the original number itself, then that very number is called abundant number. Let's take examples. 12 is abundant, 18 is abundant. If that is the case, if I now find uh, Find the proper factors of 12, add those proper factors, what I expected to get as the sum will not be bigger than 12. Similarly, 18, if I now find it is proper factors, add those proper factors, if I add them, what I expected to get is a number higher than this 18. Let me do that. So starting with 12, proper factors of 12 will not be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. In addition of the proper factors of this number, 12 will give you 16. And you can see 16 is bigger than 12. So which means 12 is an abundant number. Let me take 18. 
18, the profile factors of 18 will now be 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9. Addition of 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9 give a result to 21, and you can see 21 is bigger than 18, which means 18 is an abundant number. Other examples of abundant numbers, you have 20, 24, 30, 36, 40, 42, and so on. Thank you for your attention. We see more of these interesting things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.